are long-suffering in your judgments and righteous in all your deeds. By your wisdom, all things exist from eternity, and before creating them, you know their works forever and ever. Nothing is done without you, and nothing is known unless you desire it. You have created all the spirits and have established a statue and law for all their works. You have spread the heavens for your glory and have appointed all their hosts according to your will. The mighty winds according to their walls before they became angels of holiness. And eternal spirits in their dominions, the heavenly lights to their mysteries, the stars to their paths, the clouds to their tasks, the thunderbolts and lightnings to their duties, and the perfect treasuries of snow and hail to their purposes. created the earth by your power and the seas and depths by your might. You have fashioned all their inhabitants according to your wisdom and have appointed all that is in them according to your will. And to the spirit of man which you have formed in the world, you have given dominion over the works of your hands for everlasting days and unending generations. In their ages you have allotted to them tasks during all their generations and judgment in their appointed seasons, according to the rule of the two spirits. For you have established their ways forever and ever, and have ordained from eternity their visitation for reward and chastisements. You have allotted it to all their seed for eternal generations and everlasting years. In the wisdom of your knowledge, you did establish their destiny before ever they were. All things exist according to your will, and without you nothing is done. These things I know by the wisdom which comes from you, for you have unstopped my ears to marvelous mysteries. And yet I, a shape of clay kneaded in water, a ground of shame and a source of pollution, a melting pot of wickedness and an edifice of sin, a straying and perverted spirit of no understanding, fearful of righteous judgments. What can I say that is not foreknown? And what can I utter that is not foretold? All things are graven before you on a written reminder for everlasting ages and for the numbered cycles of the eternal years and all their seasons. They are not hidden or absent from you. What shall a man say concerning his sin? And how shall he plead concerning his iniquities? And how shall he reply to righteous judgment? For you, O God of knowledge, are all righteous deeds and the counsel of truth. But to the sons of men is the work of iniquity and deeds of deceit. It is you who has created breath for the tongue, and you know its words. You established the fruit of the lips before ever they were. You indeed set words to measure and the flow of breath from the lips to scale. You bring forth sounds according to their mysteries and the flow of breath from the lips according to its reckoning that they may tell of your glory and recount your wonders in all your works of truth and in all your righteous judgments. And that your name may be praised by the mouth of all men and that they may know you according to their understanding and bless you forever. By your mercies and by your great goodness, you have strengthened the spirit of man in the face of the scourge and have purified the erring spirit of a multitude of sins, that it may declare your marvels in the presence of all your creatures. I will declare to the assembly of the simple the judgments by which I was scourged, and to the sons of men all your wonders by which you have shown yourself mighty in me in the presence of the sons of Adam. Hear, O oh, you wise men, and meditate on knowledge. O oh, you fearful, be steadfast, increase in prudence. O oh, all you simple, O oh, just men, put away iniquity. Hold fast to the covenant, O oh, all you of perfect way. O oh, all you afflicted with misery, be patient and despise no righteous judgment, 
but the foolish of heart shall not comprehend these things. Upon my uncircumcised lips you have weighed a reply. You have upheld my soul, strengthening my loins and restoring my power. My foot has stood in the realm of ungodliness. I have been a snare to those who rebel, but healing to those of them who repent, prudence to the simple, and steadfastness to the fearful of heart. To traitors you have made of me a mockery and scorn, but a counsel of truth and understanding to the upright of way. I have been iniquity for the wicked, ill repute on the lips of the fierce. The scoffers have gnashed their teeth, I have been a byword to traitors. The assembly of the wicked has raged against me. They have roared like turbulent seas, and their towering waves have spat out mud and slime. But to the elect of righteousness, you have made me a banner and a discerning interpreter of wonderful mysteries, to try those who practice truth and to test those who love correction. To the interpreters of error, I have been an opponent, but a man of peace to all those who see true things. To all those who seek smooth things, I have been a spirit of zeal. Like the sound of the roaring of many waters, so have all the deceivers thundered against me. All their thoughts were devilish schemings. They have cast towards the pit the life of the man whose mouth you have confirmed and into whose heart you have put teaching and understanding, that he might open a fountain of knowledge to all men of insight. They have exchanged them for whips of uncircumcision, and for the foreign tongue of a people without understanding, that they might come to ruin in their strength. I thank you, O Lord, for you have placed my soul in the bundle of the living and have hedged me about against all the snares of the pit. Violent men have sought after my life because I clung to your covenant. For they, an assembly of deceit and a horde of Belial, know not that my stand is maintained by you and that in your mercy you will save my soul since my steps proceed from you. From you it is that they assail my life, that you may be glorified by the judgment of the wicked, and manifest your might through me in the presence of the sons of men. For it is by your mercy that I stand. And I said, Mighty men have pitched their camps against me, and have encompassed me with all their weapons of war. They have let fly arrows against which there is no cure, and the flame of their javelins is like a consuming fire among trees. The clamor of their shouting is like the bellowing of many waters, like a storm of destruction devouring a multitude of men. As their waves rear up, naught and vanity spout upward to the stars, but although my heart melted like water, my soul held fast to your covenant, and the net which they spread for me has taken their own foot. They have themselves fallen into the snares which they laid for my life, but my foot remains upon level ground. Apart from their assembly, I will bless your name. have fastened your eye upon me. You have saved me from the zeal of lying interpreters and from the congregation of those who seek smooth things. You have redeemed the soul of the poor one whom they planned to destroy by spilling his blood because he served you. Because they knew not that my steps were directed by you, they made me an object of shame and derision in the mouth of all the seekers of falsehood. But you, O oh my God, have given aid to the soul of the poor and the needy against one stronger than he. You have redeemed my soul from the hand of the mighty. You have not permitted their insults to dismay me so that I forsook your service for the fear of the wickedness of the ungodly or bartered my steadfast heart for folly. They caused me to be like a ship on the deep of the sea, 
and like a fortified city before the aggressor, and like a woman in travail with her firstborn child, upon whose labor pangs have come, and grievous pains, filling with anguish her childbearing crucible. For the children have come to the throes of death, and she labors in her pains who bears a man. For amid the throes of death she shall bring forth a child, and amid the pains of hell there shall spring from her childbearing crucible a marvelous, mighty counselor, and a man shall be delivered from out of the throes. When he is conceived, all wombs shall quicken, and the time of their delivery shall be in grievous pains. They shall be appalled who are with child, and when he is brought forth, every pang shall come upon the childbearing crucible. And they, the conceivers of vanity, shall be prey to terrible anguish. The wombs of the pit shall be prey to all the works of horror. The foundations of the wall shall rock like a ship upon the face of the waters. The heavens shall roar with a noise of roaring, and those who dwell in the dust, as well as those who sail the seas, shall be appalled by the roaring of the waters. All their wise men shall be like sailors on the deep, for all their wisdom shall be swallowed up in the midst of the howling seas. As the abysses boil above the fountains of the waters, the towering waves and billows shall rage with the voice of their roaring. As they rage, hell and Abaddon shall open, and all the flying arrows of the pit shall send out their voice to the abyss. And the gates of hell shall open on all the works of vanity, and the doors of the pit shall close on the conceivers of wickedness, and the everlasting bars shall be bolted on all the spirits of naught. Thank you, O Lord, for you have redeemed my soul from the pit, and from the hell of Abaddon you have raised me up to everlasting height. I walk on limitless level ground, and I know there is hope for him whom you have shaped from dust for the everlasting counsel. You have cleansed a perverse spirit of great sin, that it may stand with the host of the holy ones, and that it may enter into community with the congregation of the sons of heaven. You have allotted to man an everlasting destiny amidst the spirits of knowledge, that he may praise your name in a common rejoicing, and recount your marvels before all your works. And yet I, a creature of clay, what am I? Needed with water, what is my worth and my might? For I have stood in the realm of wickedness, and my walk was with the damned. The soul of the poor one was carried away in the midst of great tribulation. Miseries of torment dodged my steps while all the snares of the pit were opened, and the lures of wickedness were set up, and the nets of the damned were spread on the waters. While all the arrows of the pit flew out without cease, and striking left no hope. While the rope beat down in judgment, and a destiny of wrath fell upon the abandoned, and a venting of fury upon the cunning. It was a time of the wrath of all Belial, and the bonds of death tightened without any escape. The torrents of Belial shall reach to all sides of the world. In all their channels a consuming fire shall destroy every tree, green and barren, on their banks. Unto the end of their courses it shall scourge with flames of fire, and shall consume the foundations of the earth and the expanse of dry land. The faces of the mountains shall blaze, and the roots of the rocks shall turn to torrents of pitch. It shall devour as far as the great abyss. The torrents of Belial shall break into Abaddon, and the deeps of the abyss shall groan amid the roar of heaving mud. The land shall cry out because of the calamity fallen upon the world, and all its deeps shall howl, and all those upon it shall rave, and shall perish amid the great misfortune. For God shall sound his mighty voice, and his holy abode shall thunder with the truth of his glory. The heavenly host shall cry out, and the world's foundations shall stagger and sway. The war of the heavenly warriors shall scourge the earth, 
and it shall not end before the appointed destruction, which shall be forever and without compare. I thank you, O Lord, for you are as a fortified wall to me, and as an iron bar against all destroyers. You have set my feet upon rock, that I may walk in the way of eternity and in the paths which you have chosen. I thank you, O Lord, for you have illumined my face by your covenant. I seek you, and sure as the dawn you appear as perfect light to me. The teachers of lies have smoothed your people with words, and false prophets have led them astray. They perish without understanding, for their works are in folly. For I am despised by them, and they have no esteem for me, that you may manifest your might through me. They have banished me from my land like a bird from its nest. All my friends and brethren are driven far from me, and hold me for a broken vessel. And they, teachers of lies and seers of falsehood, have schemed against me a devilish scheme to exchange the wall engraved on my heart by you for the smooth things which they speak to your people. And they withhold from the thirsty the drink of knowledge and satisfy their thirst with vinegar that they may gaze on their stray, on their folly concerning their feast days and fall into their snares. But you, O oh God, you despise all Belial's designs. It is your purpose that shall be done and the design of your heart that shall be established forever. As for them, they dissemble, they plan devilish schemes. They seek you with a double heart and are not confirmed in your truth. A root bearing poisoned and bitter fruit is in their designs. They walk in stubbornness of heart and seek you among idols. And they set before themselves the stumbling block of their sin. They come to inquire of you from the mouth of lying prophets deceived by error who speak with strange lips to your people and an alien tongue that they may cunningly turn all their works to folly. For they hearken not to your voice, nor do they give ear to your word. Of the vision of knowledge they say, it is unsure, and of the way of your heart, it is not the way. But you, O oh God, will reply to them chastising them in your might because of their idols and because of the multitude of their sins that they who have turned aside from your covenant may be caught in their own designs you will destroy in judgment all men of lies and there shall be no more seers of error for in your works is no folly no guile in the design of your heart but those who please you shall stand before you forever. Those who walk in the way of your heart shall be established forevermore. Clinging to you, I will stand. I will rise against those who despise me, and my hand shall be turned against those who deride me. For they have no esteem for me, that you may manifest your might through me. You have revealed yourself to me in your power as perfect light, and you have not covered my face with shame. All those who are gathered in your covenant inquire of me, and they hearken to me who walk in the way of your heart, who array themselves for you in the counsel of the holy. You will cause their law to endure forever and truth to go forward unhindered, and you will not allow them to be led astray by the hand of the damned when they plot against them. You will put the fear of them into your people and will make of them a hammer to all the peoples of the lands, that at the judgment they may cut off all those who transgress your word. Through me you have illumined the face of the congregation and have shown your infinite power. For you have given me knowledge through your marvelous mysteries and have shown yourself mighty within me in the midst of your marvelous counsel. You have done wonders 
before the congregation for the sake of your glory, that they may make known your mighty deeds to all the living. But what is flesh to be worthy of this? What is a creature of clay for such great marvels to be done? Whereas he is in iniquity from the womb and in guilty unfaithfulness until his old age. Righteousness, I know, is not of man, nor is perfection of way of the Son of Man. To the Most High God belongs all righteous deeds. The way of man is not established except by the Spirit which God created for him to make perfect a way for the children of men, that all his creatures may know the might of his power and the abundance of his mercies towards all the sons of his grace. As for me, shaking and trembling seizes me, and all my bones are broken. My heart dissolves like wax before fire, and my knees are like water pouring down a steep place. For I remember my sins and the unfaithfulness of my fathers. When the wicked rose against your covenant and the damned against your word, I said in my sinfulness, I am forsaken by your covenant. But calling to mind the might of your hand and the greatness of your compassion, I rose and stood, and my spirit was established in the face of the scourge. I lean on your grace and on the multitude of your mercies, for you will pardon iniquity, and through your righteousness you will purify man of his sin. Not for his sake will you do it, but for the sake of your glory. For you have created the just and the wicked. I thank you, O Lord, for you have not abandoned me while I sojourned among a people burdened with sin. You have not judged me according to my guilt, nor have you abandoned me because of the designs of my inclination. But you have saved my life from the pit. You have brought your servant deliverance in the midst of lions destined for the guilty, and of lionesses which crush the bones of the mighty and drink the blood of the brave. You have caused me to dwell with the many fishers who spread a net upon the face of the waters, and with the hunters of the children of iniquity. You have established me there for justice. You have confirmed the counsel of truth in my heart and the waters of the covenant for those who seek it. You have closed up the mouth of the young lions whose teeth are like a sword and whose great teeth are like a pointed spear, like the venom of dragons. All their design is for robbery and they have lain in wait, but they have not opened their mouth against me. For you, O God, have sheltered me from the children of men, and have hidden your wall within me against the time when you should reveal your salvation to me. For you have not forsaken me in my soul's distress, and you have heard my cry in the bitterness of my soul. And when I cried out, you did not consider my sorrowful complaint. You have preserved the soul of the poor one in the den of lions which sharpened their tongue like a sword. You have closed up their teeth, O God, lest they rend the soul of the poor and needy. You have made their tongue go back like a sword to its sheath, lest the soul of your servant be blotted out. You have dealt wondrously with the poor one to manifest your might within me in the presence of the sons of men. You have placed him in the melting pot like gold in the fire and like silver refined in the melting pot of the smelters to be purified seven times. The wicked and fierce have stormed against me with their afflictions. They have battered my soul all day, but you, O oh my God, have changed the tempest to a breeze. You have delivered the soul of the poor one like a bird from the net and like prey from the mouth of lions. Blessed are you, O Lord, for you have not abandoned the fatherless or despised the poor. For your might is boundless and your glory beyond measure and wonderful heroes minister to you. 
Yet have you done marvels among the humble in the mire underfoot, and among those eager for righteousness, causing all the well-loved poor to rise up together from the trampling. But I have been iniquity to those who contend with me, dispute and quarreling to my friends, wrath to the members of my covenant, and murmuring and protest to all my companions. All who have eaten my bread have lifted their heel against me, and all those joined to my counsel have mocked me with wicked lips. The members of my covenant have rebelled and have murmured round about me. They have gone as bearers before the children of mischief concerning the mystery which you have hidden in me, and to show your greatness through me, and because of their guilt you have hidden the fountain of understanding and the counsel of truth. They consider but the mischief of their heart. With devilish schemes, they unsheath a deceitful tongue from which ever springs the poison of dragons. And like serpents which creep in the dust, so do they let fly their poisonous darts, vipers' venom against which there is no charm. And this has brought incurable pain, a malignant scourge within the body of your servant causing his spirit to faint and draining his strength so that he may stand to no firm stand. They have overtaken me in a narrow pass without escape, and there is no rest for me in my trial. They sound my censure upon a harp, and their murmuring and storming upon a zither. Anguish seizes me like the pangs of a woman in travail, and my heart is troubled within me. I am clothed in blackness, and my tongue cleaves to the roof of my mouth. For I fear the mischief of their heart, and their inclination towards evil appears as bitterness before me. The light of my face is dimmed to darkness, and my radiance is turned to decay. For you, O God, did widen my heart but they straighten it with affliction and hedge me about with darkness. I eat the bread of wailing and drink unceasing tears. Truly my eyes are dimmed by grief and my soul by daily bitterness. Grief and sorrow encompasses me and humiliation covers my face. My bread is turned into an adversary and my drink into an accuser. It has entered into my bones, causing my spirit to stagger and my strength to fail. According to the mysteries of sin, they change the works of God by their transgression. Truly I am bound with unterrible ropes and with unbreakable chains. A thick wall fences me in, iron bars and gates of bronze. My prison is counted with the abyss as being without any escape. Of Belial have encompassed my soul, leaving me without deliverance. You have opened my ears to the correction of those who reprove with justice. You have saved me from the congregation of vanity and from the assembly of violence. You have brought me into the council and have purified me of sin. And I know there is hope for those who turn from transgression and for those who abandon sin and to walk without wickedness in the way of your heart. I am consoled for the roaring of the peoples and for the tumult of kingdoms when they assemble. For in a little while I know you will raise up survivors among your people and a remnant within your inheritance. You will purify and cleanse them of their sin, for all their deeds are in your truth. You will judge them in your great loving kindness and in the multitude of your mercies and in the abundance of your pardon, teaching them according to your word. And you will establish them in your counsel according to the uprightness of your truth. You will do these things for your glory and for your own sake to magnify the law 
and the truth and to enlighten the members of your council in the midst of the sons of men that they may recount your marvels for everlasting generations and meditate unceasingly upon your mighty deeds. All the nations shall acknowledge your truth and all the people your glory. For you will bring your glorious salvation to all the men of your council, to those who share a common lot with the angels of the face. And among them shall be no mediator to invoke you and no messenger to make reply. For they shall reply according to your glorious word and shall be your princes in the company of the angels. They shall send out a bud forever like a flower of the fields and shall cause a shoot to grow into the branches of an everlasting plant. It shall cover the whole earth with its shadow and its crown shall reach to the clouds. Its roots shall go down to the abyss and all the rivers of Eden shall water its branches. A source of light shall become an eternal, ever-flowing fountain, and in its bright flames all the sons of iniquity shall be consumed. It shall be a fire to devour all sinful men in utter destruction. They who bore the yoke of my testimony have been led astray by teachers of lies, and have rebelled against the service of righteousness, whereas you, O oh my God, did command them to mend their ways by walking in the way of holiness, where no man goes who is uncircumcised or unclean or violent. They have staggered aside from the way of your heart and languish in great wretchedness. A council of Belial is in their heart, and in accordance with their wicked design, they wallow in sin. I am as a sailor in a ship amid furious seas. Their waves and all their billows roar against me. There is no calm in the whirlwind that I may restore my soul. No path that I may straighten my way on the face of the waters. The deeps resound to my groaning, and my soul has journeyed to the gates of death. But I shall be as one who enters a fortified city as one who seeks refuge behind a high wall until deliverance comes. I will lean on your truth, O oh my God. For you will set the foundation on rock and the framework by the measuring court of justice. And the tried stones you will lay by the plumb line of truth to build a mighty wall which shall not sway. And no man entering there shall stagger. For no enemy shall ever invade it, since its doors shall be doors of protection through which no man shall pass. And its bars shall be firm, and no man shall break them. No mob shall enter in with their weapons of war until all the arrows of the war of wickedness have come to an end. Then, at the time of judgment, the sword of God shall hasten all the sons of his truth shall awake to overthrow wickedness. All the sons of iniquity shall be no more. The hero shall bend his bow. The fortress shall open onto endless space and the everlasting gates shall send out weapons of war. They shall be mighty from end to end of the earth and there shall be no escape for the guilty of heart in their battle. They shall be utterly trampled down without any remnant. There shall be no hope in the greatness of their might, no refuge for the mighty warriors. For the battle shall be to the Most High God. Hoist a banner, O you who lie in the dust, O bodies engulfed by worms. Raise up a pennant for the destruction of wickedness. The sinful shall be destroyed in the battles against the ungodly. The scourging flood when it advances shall not invade the stronghold. have upheld me by your strength. You have shed your Holy Spirit upon me that I may not stumble. You have strengthened me before the battles of wickedness, and during all their disasters you have not permitted that fear should cause me to desert your covenant. 
You have made me like a strong tower, a high wall, and have established my edifice upon rock. Eternal foundations serve for my ground, and all my ramparts are a tried wall which shall not move. You have placed me, O oh my God, among the branches of the council of holiness. You have established my mouth in your covenant, and my tongue is like that of your disciples. Whereas the spirit of disaster is without a mouth, and all the sons of iniquity without a reply. For the lying lips shall be dumb, for you will condemn in judgment all those who assail me, distinguishing through me between the just and the wicked. For you know the whole intent of a creature. You discern every reply. And you have established my heart on your teaching and truth, directing my steps into the paths of righteousness, that I may walk before you in the land of the living, into paths of glory and infinite peace, which shall never end. For you know the inclination of your servant, that I have not relied upon the works of my hands to raise up my heart, nor have I sought refuge in my own strength. I have no fleshly refuge, and your servant has no righteous deeds to deliver him from the pit of no forgiveness. But I lean on the abundance of your mercies and hope for the greatness of your grace, that you will bring salvation to flower and the branch to growth, providing refuge in your strength and raising up my heart. For in your righteousness you have appointed me for your covenant, and I have clung to your truth and gone forward in your ways. You have made me a father to the sons of grace, and as a foster father to men of marvel. They have opened their mouths like little babes, like a child playing in the lap of its nurse. You have lifted my horn above those who insult me, and those who attack me sway like the branches of a tree. My enemies are like chaff before the wind, and my dominion is over the sons of iniquity. For you have aided my soul, O oh my God, and have lifted my horn on high. And I shall shine in a sevenfold light in the council appointed by you for your glory. For you are an everlasting heavenly light to me, and will establish my feet upon level ground forever. I thank you, O Lord, for you have enlightened me through your truth. In your marvelous mysteries and in your loving kindness to a man of vanity and in the greatness of your mercy to a perverse heart, you have granted me knowledge. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord, and who is according to your truth? Who, when he is judged, shall be righteous before you? For no spirit can reply to your rebuke, nor can any withstand your wrath. Yet you bring all the sons of your truth in forgiveness before you, to cleanse them of their faults through your great goodness, and to establish them before you through the multitude of your mercies forever and ever. For you are an eternal God. All your ways are determined forever and ever, and there is none other beside you. And what is a man of nothing and vanity that he should understand your marvelous, mighty deeds? I thank you, O oh God, for you have not cast my lot in the congregation of vanity, nor have you placed my decree in the counsel of the cunning. You have called me to your grace and to your forgiveness. You have brought me, and by the multitude of your mercies, to all judgments of righteousness. As for me, I am an unclean man, and from the womb of her who conceived me, I am an unclean man. And from the womb of her who has conceived me, I am in sinful guilt. And from the breast of my mother, in injustice, and in the bosom of my nurse, in great impurity. And from my youth I am in blood, and until my old age, in the iniquity of the flesh. But you, my God, 
you have established my feet in the way of your heart and have opened my ears to your wonderful tidings and my heart to understand your truth. For you indeed reveal your salvation and your righteousness is made firm forever. But man is not the master of his way, but you have done all this for your glory. I thank you, O Lord, for you have placed me beside a fountain of streams in an arid land and close to a spring of waters in a dry land and beside a watered garden in a wilderness. For you did set a plantation of cypress, pine, and cedar for your glory, trees of life beside a mysterious fountain hidden among the trees by the water, and they put out a shoot of the everlasting plant. But before they did so, they took root and sent out their roots to the watercourse that its stem might be open to the living waters and be one with the everlasting spring. And all the beasts of the forest fed on its leafy branches. Its stem was trodden by all who passed on the way and its branches by all the birds. And all the trees by the water rose above it, for they grew in their plantation, but they sent out no root to the watercourse. And the bud of the shoot of holiness of the plant of truth was hidden and was not esteemed, and being unperceived, its mystery was sealed. You did hedge in its fruit, O God, with the mystery of mighty heroes, and of spirits of holiness, and of the whirling flame of fire. No man shall approach the wellspring of life or drink the waters of holiness with the everlasting trees or bear fruit with the plant of heaven who seeing has not discerned and considering has not believed in the fountain of life who has turned his hand against the everlasting bud and I was despised by tumultuous rivers for they cast up their slime upon me. But you, my God, has put into my mouth, as it were, rain for all those who thirst, and a fount of living waters which shall not fail. When they are opened, they shall not run dry. They shall be a torrent overflowing its banks, and like the bottomless seas, they shall suddenly gush forth, which were hidden in secret, and shall be like the waters of the flood to every tree, both the green and the barren. To every beast and bird they shall be an abyss. The trees shall sink like lead in the mighty waters. Fire shall burn among them, and they shall be dried up. But the fruitful plant by the everlasting spring shall be an Eden of glory, bearing fruits of life. By my hand you have opened for them a wellspring and ditches, that all their channels may be laid out according to a certain measuring cord and the planting of their trees according to the plumb line of the sun, that their branches may become a beautiful branch of glory. When I lift my hand to dig its ditches, its roots shall run deep into the hardest rock and its stem in the earth. In the season of heat, it shall keep its strength. But if I take away my hand, it shall be like a thistle in the wilderness. Its stem shall be like needles in a salty wind, and thistles and thorns shall grow from its ditches, and brambles and briars. Its border trees shall be like the wild grapevine, whose foliage withers before the heat, and its stem shall not be open to the spring. Behold, I am carried away with the sick. I am acquainted with scourges. I am forsaken in my sorrow, and without any strength. For my sore breaks out in bitter pains, and an incurable sickness, impossible to stay. My heart laments within me as in those who go down to hell. My spirit is imprisoned with the dead, for my life has reached the pit. My soul languishes within me day and night without rest. My wound breaks out like burning fire shut up in my bones, whose flames devour me for days on end, diminishing my strength for times on end, and destroying my flesh for seasons on end. The pains fly out towards me, and my soul within me 
languishes even to death. My strength has gone from my body and my heart is out like water. My flesh is dissolved like wax and the strength of my loins is turned to fear. My arm is torn from its socket and I can lift my hand no more. My foot is held by fetters. My knees slide like water. I can no longer walk. I cannot step forward lightly for my legs and arms are bound by shackles which cause me to stumble. The tongue has gone back from which you made marvelously mighty within my mouth. I can no longer give voice. I have no words for my disciples to revive the spirit of those who stumble and to speak words of support to the weary. My circumcised lips lack wisdom. Death encompass me, and hell is upon my bed. My couch utters a lamentation, and my palate is sound of complaint. My eyes are like fire in the furnace, and my tears like rivers of water. My eyes grow dim with waiting, for my salvation is far from me, and my life is apart from me. But behold, from desolation to ruin, from the pain to the sore, and from the travail to the throes, my soul meditates on your marvelous works. In your mercies, you have not cast me aside. Season by season, my soul delights in the abundance of mercy. I will reply to him who slanders me, and I will rebuke my oppressor. I will declare his sentence unjust and declare your judgment righteous. For I know by your truth and I choose your judgment upon me. I delight in my scourges for I hope for your loving kindness. You have put a supplication in the mouth of your servant and you have not threatened my life nor rejected my peace. You have not failed my expectation but have upheld my spirit in face of the scourge for it is you who has founded my spirit and you know my intent in my distress you have comforted me I delight in forgiveness and am consoled for the former transgression for I know there is hope in your grace and expectation in your great power for no man can be just in your judgment or righteous in your trial Though one man be more just than another, one person more wise than another, one mortal more glorious than another creature of clay, yet is there no power to compare with your might. There is no bound to your glory, and to your wisdom no measure. And my oppressor shall not prevail against me. I will be a stumbling block to those who swallow me up, and a snare to all those who battle against me. I will be for my enemies a cause of shame, and a cause of disgrace to those who murmur against me. For you, O oh God, you will plead my cause, for it is according to the mystery of your wisdom that you have rebuked me. You will conceal the truth until its time, and righteousness until its appointed moment. Your rebuke shall become my joy and gladness, and my scourges shall turn to eternal healing and everlasting peace. The scorn of my enemies shall become a crown of glory, and my stumbling shall change to everlasting might. For in you my light shall shine forth in your glory. For as a light from out of the darkness, so will you enlighten me. You will bring healing to my wound, and marvelous might in place of my stumbling, and everlasting space to my straightened soul. For you are my refuge, my high mountain, my firm rock, and my fortress. And in you I will shelter from all the designs of ungodliness. For you will aid me with eternal deliverance. For you have known me from the time of my father, and have chosen me from the womb. From the belly of my mother you have dealt kindly with me, and from
from the breast of her who conceived me have your mercies been with me. Your grace was with me in the lap of her who reared me, and from my youth you have illumined me with the wisdom of your judgment. You have upheld me with certain truth. You have delighted me with your Holy Spirit and have opened my heart till this day. Your just rebuke accompanies my faults and your safeguard peace delivers my soul. The abundance of your forgiveness is with my steps and infinite mercy accompanies your judgment of me. Until I am old, you will care for me. For my father knew me not and my mother abandoned me to you. For you are a father to all the sons of your truth. And as a woman who tenderly loves her babe, so do you rejoice in them. And as a foster father bearing a child in his lap, so you care for all your creatures. I thank you, O Lord, and nothing exists except by your will. None can consider your deep secrets or contemplate your mysteries. What then is man that is earth, that is shaped from clay and returns to the dust, that you should give him to understand such marvels and make known to him the counsel of your truth? Clay and dust that I am, what can I plan unless you wish it? And what contrive unless you desire it? What strength shall I have unless you keep me upright? And how shall I understand unless by the Spirit which you have shaped for me? And what can I say unless you open my mouth? And how can I answer unless you enlighten me? Behold, you are Prince of Gods and King of Majesties, Lord of all spirits and Ruler of all creatures. Nothing is done without you and nothing is known without your will. Beside you there is nothing, and nothing can compare with you in strength. In the presence of your glory there is nothing, and your might is without price. Who among your great and marvelous creatures can stand in the presence of your glory? How then can he who returns to his dust? For your glory's sake alone you have made all these things. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of mercy and abundant grace, for you have made known your wisdom to me, that I should recount your marvelous deeds, keeping silence neither by day nor by night, for I have trusted in your grace, in your great goodness, and in the multitude of your mercies, for I have leaned on your truth, and unless you rebuke, there is no stumbling, unless you foreknow it, and there is no scourge. Nothing is done without your will. I will cling to your ways according to my knowledge of your truth. Contemplating your glory, I will recount your wonderful works. And understanding your goodness, I will lean on the multitude of your mercies and hope for your forgiveness. For you yourself has shaped my spirit and established me according to your will. And you have not placed my support in gain, nor does my heart delight in riches. You have given me no fleshly refuge. The might of warriors rests on abundant delights and on plenty of corn and wine and oil. They pride themselves in possessions and wealth. But the righteous is like a green tree beside streams of water, bringing forth leaves and multiplying its branches. For you have chosen them from among the children of men that they may all grow and be nourished from the land. You will give to the children of your truth unending joy and everlasting gladness. And according to the measure of their knowledge, so shall they be honored one more than another. And likewise, for the Son of Man, you will increase his portion in the knowledge of your truth. And according to the measure of his knowledge, so shall he be honored. The soul of your servant has loathed riches and gain 
and he has not desired exquisite delights. My heart rejoices in your covenant, and your truth delights my soul. I shall flower like the lily, and my heart shall be open to the everlasting fountain. My support shall be in the might from on high. I thank you, my God, for you have dealt wondrously to dust and mightily towards a creature of clay. I thank you, I thank you. What am I that you should teach me the counsel of your truth and give me understanding of your marvelous works? That you should lay hymns of thanksgiving within my mouth and praise upon my tongue and that of my circumcised lips you should make a seat of rejoicing. I will sing your mercies and on your mind I will meditate all day long. I will bless your name forevermore. I will declare your glory in the midst of the sons of men, and my soul shall delight in your great goodness. I know that your word is truth, and that your righteousness is in your hand, that all knowledge is in your purpose, and all power is in your might, and that every glory is yours. your wrath are all chastisements, but in your goodness is much forgiveness, and your mercy is towards the son of your good will. For you have made known to them the counsel of your truth, and have taught them your marvelous mysteries. For the sake of your glory you have purified man of sin, that he may be made holy for you with no abominable uncleanness and no guilty wickedness that he may be one with the children of your truth and partake of the lot of your holy ones. That bodies overtaken by worms may be raised from the dust to the counsel of your truth and that the perverse spirit may be lifted to the understanding which comes from you. That he may stand before you with the everlasting host and with your spirits of holiness to be renewed together with all the living and to rejoice together with them that know. I thank you, my God. I praise you, my rock, for you have made known to me the counsel of your truth and have taught me your marvelous mysteries and have revealed your wonders to me. I have beheld your marvels towards the children of grace, and I know that righteousness is yours, that in your mercies there is hope for me, but without your grace, destruction without end. But a fountain of bitter mourning opens for me, and my tears fall down. Distress is not hidden from my eyes when I think of the evil inclinations of man of his return to dust, I understand and observe sin and the sorrow of guilt. They enter my heart and reach into my bones and to meditate in sorrowful meditation. I will groan with the zither of lamentation in all grief-stricken mourning and bitter complaint until iniquity and wickedness are consumed and the disease bringing scourge is no more. Then will I play on the zither of deliverance and the harp of joy, on the tabers of prayer and the pipe of praise without end. Who among all your creatures is able to recount your wonders? May your name be praised by the mouth of all men. May they bless you forever in accordance with their understanding and proclaim with you the voice of praise in the company of the sons of heaven. There shall be neither groaning nor complaint and wickedness shall be destroyed forever. Your truth shall be revealed in eternal glory and everlasting peace. Blessed are you, O my Lord, who has given to your servant the knowledge of wisdom that he may comprehend your wonders and recount in your abundant grace. Blessed are you, O God of mercy and compassion, for the might of your power and the greatness of your truth and for the multitude of your favors in all your works. Rejoice the soul of your servant with your truth and cleanse me by your righteousness. 
even as I have hoped in your goodness and waited for your grace, so have you freed me from my calamities in accordance in your forgiveness. And in my distress you have comforted me, for I have weaned on your mercy. Blessed are you, O Lord, for it is you who has done these things. You have set hymns of praise within the mouth of your servant and have established for me a response of the tongue. With the everlasting spirits securely in a dwelling of peace, in silence and quietness, in the tents of security and salvation. I will praise your name among them that fear you. Bowing down in prayer, I will beg your favors from season to season always. When light emerges from its dwelling place, and when the day reaches its appointed end in accordance with the walls of the great light of heaven. When evening falls and light departs at the beginning of the dominion of darkness, at the hour appointed for night and its end when morning returns and the shadows retire to their dwelling place before the approach of light. Always, at the genesis of every period, and at the beginning of every age, and at the end of every season, according to the statute and signs appointed to every dominion by the certain wall from the mouth of God, by the precept which is and shall be forever and ever without end. Without it nothing is nor shall be, for the God of knowledge established it, and there is no other beside him. I, the Master, know you, O my God, by the Spirit which you have given to me. And by your Holy Spirit I have faithfully hearkened to your marvelous counsel. In the mystery of your wisdom you have opened knowledge to me. And in your mercies you have unlocked for me the fountain of your might. Before you no man is just that he may understand all your mysteries or give answer to your rebuke. But the children of your grace shall delight in your correction and watch for your goodness. For in your mercies you will show yourself to them and they shall know you. At the time of your glory they shall rejoice. You have caused them to draw near in accordance with their knowledge and have admitted them in accordance with their understanding. And in their divisions they shall serve you throughout their dominion without ever turning aside from you or transgressing your word. Behold, I was taken from dust and fashioned out of clay as a source of uncleanness and a shameful nakedness, a heap of dust and a kneading with water and a house of darkness a creature of clay returning to dust, returning at the appointed time to dwell in the dust from where it was taken. How then shall dust reply to its maker? And how can it understand his works? How shall it stand before him who reproves it? And the spring of eternity, the well of glory, and the fountain of knowledge, not even the wonderful heroes can declare all your glory or stand in face of your wrath. And there is none among them that can answer your rebuke. For you are just and none can oppose you. How then can man who returns to his dust? I hold my peace. What more shall I say than this? I have spoken in accordance with my knowledge out of the righteousness given to a creature of clay. And how shall I speak unless you open my mouth? How understand unless you teach me? How shall I seek you unless you uncover my heart? And how follow the way that is straight unless you guide me? How shall my foot stay on the path unless you give it strength? And how shall I rise? Blessed are you, O Lord, who has given understanding to the heart of your servant, that he may understand all these things, and resist the works of wickedness, and bless justly all those who choose your will, and that he may love all that you love, and loathe all that you hate. You shall instruct your servant, 
spirits of man for you have cast their lot according to the spirits between good and evil to accomplish their task. And I know through the understanding which comes from you that in your goodwill towards man you have increased his inheritance in your Holy Spirit and thus you have drawn me near to understanding of you. And the closer I approach, the more I am filled with zeal against all the workers of iniquity and the men of deceit. For none of those who approach you rebels against your command, nor do any of those who know you alter your words. For you are righteous, and all your elect are truth. You will blot out all injustice and wickedness forever, and your righteousness shall be revealed before the eyes of all your creatures. I know through your great goodness, and with an oath I have undertaken never to sin against you, not to do anything evil in your eyes, and thus do I bring into community all the men of my counsel. I will cause each man to draw near in accordance with his understanding, and according to the greatness of his inheritance, so will I love him. I will not honor an evil man, nor consider the bribes of shame. I will not barter your truth for riches, nor one of your precepts for bribes. I thank you, O Lord, as befits the greatness of your power and the multitude of your marvels forever and ever. You are a merciful God and rich in favors, pardoning those who repent of their sin and visiting the iniquity of the wicked. You delight in the free will offering of the righteous, but iniquity you hate always. You have favored me, your servant, with a spirit of knowledge that I may choose truth and goodness and loathe all the ways of iniquity. And I have loved you freely and with all my heart. Contemplating the mysteries of your wisdom, I have sought you. For this is from your hand, and nothing is done without your will. I have loved you freely and with all my heart and soul. I have purified that I might not turn aside from any of your commands. I have clung to the congregation that I might not be separated from any of your laws. I know through the understanding which comes from you that righteousness is not in a hand of flesh, that man is not master of his way, and that it is not in mortals to direct their steps. I know that the inclination of every spirit is in your hand. You did establish all its ways before ever creating it, and how can any man change your words? You alone did create the just and establish him from the womb for the time of goodwill, that he might hearken to your covenant and walk in all your ways, and that you might show yourself great to him in the multitude of your mercies and enlarge his straitened soul to eternal salvation, to perpetual and unfailing peace. You will raise up his glory from among flesh, but the wicked you did create for the time of your wrath. You did vow them from the womb to the day of massacre, for they walk in the way which is not good. They have despised your covenant, and their souls have loathed your truth. They have taken no delight in all your commandments, and have chosen that which you hate. For according to the mysteries of your wisdom, you have ordained them for great chastisements before the eyes of all your creatures, that for all eternity they may serve as a sign and a wonder, and that all men may know your glory and tremendous power. But what is flesh that it should understand these things? And how should a creature of dust direct his steps? It is you who shaped the spirit and established its work from the beginning. The way of all the living proceeds from you. I know that no riches equal your truth, and have therefore desired to enter the counsel of your holiness. I know that you have chosen them before all others, and that they shall serve you forever. 
will take no bribe for the deeds of iniquity, nor ransom for the works of wickedness. For you are a God of truth and will destroy all iniquity forever, and no wickedness shall exist before you. Because I know all these things, my tongue shall utter a reply, bowing down and confessing my transgressions. I will seek your spirit of knowledge. Cleaving to your spirit of holiness, I will hold fast to the truth of your covenant, that I may serve you in truth and wholeness of heart, and that I may love your name. Blessed are you, O Lord, maker of all things and mighty in deeds. All things are your work. Behold, you are pleased to favor your servant and have graced me with your spirit of mercy and with the radiance of your glory. Yours, yours is righteousness, for it is you who have done all these things. I know that you have marked the spirit of the just, and therefore I have chosen to keep my hands clean in accordance with your will. The soul of your servant has loathed every work of iniquity, and I know that man is not righteous except through you. And therefore I implore you by the spirit which you have given me to perfect your favors to your servant forever, purifying me by your Holy Spirit and drawing me near to you by your grace according to the abundance of your mercies. Grant me the place of your loving kindness, which you have chosen for them that love you and keep your commandments, that they may stand in your presence forever. Let no scourge come near him, lest he stagger aside from the laws of your covenant. I know, O Lord, that you are merciful and compassionate, long-suffering and rich in grace and truth, pardoning transgression and sin. You repent of evil against them that love you and keep your commandments, that return to you with faith and wholeness of heart to serve you and to do that which is good in your eyes. As you have said by the hand of Moses, you forgive transgression, iniquity, and sin, and pardon rebellion and unfaithfulness. For the bases of the mountains shall melt, and fire shall consume the deep places of hell. But you will deliver all those that are corrected by your judgments, that they may serve you faithfully, and that their seed may be before you forever. You will keep your oath and will pardon their transgression. You will cast away all their sins. You will cause them to inherit all the glory of Adam and abundance of days. I give you thanks because of the spirits which you have given to me. I will bring forth the reply of the tongue to recount your righteous deeds and the forbearance and the works of your mighty right hand and the pardon of the sins of the forefathers. I will bow down and implore your mercy on my sins and wicked deeds and on the perversity of my heart. For I have wallowed in uncleanness and have turned aside from the counsel of your truth. And I have not labored, for yours is righteousness and an everlasting blessing be upon your name. According to your righteousness, let your servant be redeemed and the wicked be brought to an end. For I have understood that it is you who does establish the path of whomsoever you choose. You hedge him in with true discernment that he may not sin against you, and that his humility may bear fruit through your chastisement. You purify his heart in trials. Preserve your servant, O God, lest he sin against you, or stagger aside from any word of your will. Strengthen the loins of your servant that he may resist the spirits of falsehood, that he may walk in all that you love and despise all that you loathe, that he may do that which is good in your eyes. Destroy their dominion in my bones, for within your servant is a spirit of flesh. How shall I see unless you open my eyes, or hear unless you open my ears? My heart is astounded. For to the uncircumcised ear a word has been disclosed, and a heart of stone has understood the right precepts. I know it is for yourself that you have done these things, O God, for what is flesh that you should act marvelously towards it. 
It is your purpose to do mightily and to establish all things for your glory. You have created the host of knowledge to declare your mighty deeds to flesh and the right precepts to him who is born of woman. You have caused the perverse heart to enter into a covenant with you and have uncovered the heart of dust that it may be preserved from evil and saved from the snares of judgment in accordance with your mercies. And I, a creature of clay, kneaded with water, a heap of dust and a heart of stone, for what am I reckoned to be worthy of this? For into an ear of dust you have put a new word, and have engraved on a heart of stone things everlasting. You have caused the straying of spirit to return, that it may enter into a covenant with you, and stand before you forever in the everlasting abode, illumined with perfect light forever, with no more darkness, for unending seasons of joy and unnumbered ages of peace. to recount all your glory. As for me, what am I? For I was taken from dust, but you, O oh God, you have done all these for your glory, according to the greatness of your loving kindness, but the guard of your righteousness in the hand of your servant forever until deliverance. May the interpreters of knowledge be with all my steps and those who decide truth in all my ways. For what is dust among all? Ashes are in their hand, nothing at all. And you have shed your Holy Spirit over dust to bring him into the company of the Holy Ones and unite them with the sons of heaven. You have shed your Holy Spirit to atone for guilt, for they are established in your truth. And you, my God, you have acted wondrously for your glory. And as for me, a creature of dust, how shall I stand in front of the tempest? And he will guard me according to the mysteries of his good pleasure. For he knows, and they will hide snares of wickedness, net after net. Every creature of deceit will come to an end. Wickedness will turn to nothing, and the inclination towards iniquity will vanish, and deeds of deceit will perish. And as for me, creature of clay, how will I gain strength for you? You are the God of knowledge, and you have made all according to your design, and without you nothing exists. And as for me, creature of dust, I know through the spirit with which you have put into me that injustice and deceit will be all struck, and insolence will cease. Works of uncleanness will turn into sickness and judgments, leading to plague and destruction. But they cannot understand your marvels, and they will not be able to know all your mysteries. How then can he who returns to his dust? As for me, I am a man of sin who has wallowed in the ways of uncleanness, and been defiled by the guilt of wickedness. As for me, in the times of wrath, I have fallen. How can I rise in view of my wound and keep myself? For there is no hope for me. As for me, a creature of clay, I have leaned on your loving kindness and on the multitude of your mysteries, O oh my God. And I know that truthful is your mouth and that your words are not revoked. As for me, I will rely in my time on your covenant and will raise myself to the post which you have established for me. As for me, I was frightened by your judgments. Who is found clean in your judgment? And what is man before you? You bring him to judgment, and he returns to dust. My God, you have opened my heart for your understanding, and have opened my ears to wean on your goodness. My heart murmurs, and my heart melts like wax because of iniquity and sin. Blessed are you, God of knowledge, who has established me, and you have met your servant with this for your sake. For I know your loving kindness, and in your mercies I hope with all my existence. And I bless your name always, 
do not forsake me in times of distress. They are confirmed in the ears of your servant forever. To announce your marvelous tidings, withdraw not your hand, that he may be confirmed in your covenant and stand before you forever. For you, O oh my God, did open a fountain in the mouth of your servant. You did engrave by the measuring cord your mysteries upon his tongue, that out of his understanding he might preach to a creature and interpret these things to dust like myself. You did open his fountain that he might rebuke the creature of clay for his way and him who is born of woman for the guilt of his deeds that he might open the fount of your truth to a creature whom you uphold by your might. That he might be according to your truth a messenger in the season of your goodness. That to the humble he might bring glad tidings of your great mercy proclaiming salvation from out of the fountain of holiness to the contrite of spirit, and everlasting joy to those who mourn. I thank you, O Lord, for you shed your Holy Spirit upon your servant. All these things you established in your wisdom and appointed all your works before ever creating them. The host of your spirits and the congregation of your holy ones, the heavens and all their hosts, and the earth and all it brings forth in the seas and depths and an everlasting task, for you have established them from before eternity. And they shall recount your glory throughout all your dominion, for you have shown them that which they had not seen by removing all ancient things and creating new ones, by breaking asunder things anciently established and raising up the things of eternity. For you are from the beginning and shall endure for ages without end. And you have appointed all these things in the mysteries of your wisdom to make known your glory to all. But what is the spirit of flesh that it should understand all this, and that it should comprehend the great design of your wisdom? What is he that is born of woman in the midst of all terrible works? He is but an edifice of dust, and a thing kneaded with water, whose beginning is sinful iniquity, and shameful nakedness, and a fount of uncleanness, and over whom a spirit of straying rules. If he is wicked, he shall become a sign forever, and a wonder to every generation, and an object of horror to all flesh. By your goodness alone is man righteous, and with your many mercies you strengthen him. You will adorn him with your splendor, and will cause him to reign amid many delights with everlasting peace and length of days. For you have spoken, and you will not take back your word. And I, your servant, I know by the spirit which you have given to me that your words are truth, and that all your works are righteousness, and that you will not take back your word. Chant, O beloved, sing to the King of glory, rejoice in the congregation of God, exult in the tents of salvation. Give thanks in the dwelling of holiness, extol together with the eternal hosts. Magnify our God and glorify our King. Sanctify His name with powerful lips and a victorious tongue. Lift up alone your voice in all ages, let a joyous meditation be heard. Burst out in eternal rejoicings and prostrate incessantly in the common assembly. Bless the wonderful maker of exalted things, him who proclaims the power of his hand, sealing mysteries and revealing secrets, lifting up those who stumble and fall, restoring the progress of those who hope for knowledge, and humbling the meetings of the everlastingly haughty, sealing the mysteries of splendor and establishing the wonders of glory. O oh, judge, whose anger is destructive in righteous loving kindness and great mercy, be gracious and merciful to those who bear fruits of his great goodness, and the source of wickedness ends. Oppression ceases, the tyrant ceases, treachery stops, and there are no senseless perversities. 
light shines and joy bursts forth. Mourning vanishes and sorrow flees. Peace is revealed, a dread ceases. A spring has opened up for an eternal blessing and for healing in all the everlasting ages. Iniquity has stopped, plague has ceased with no more illness, has been gathered in and will be no more. Announce and say, Great is God, maker of marvels, for he humbles the proud spirit with no remnant, and from the dust he lifts up the poor to eternal heights, and he lifts him up to the clouds to share a common assembly with the holy ones. He raises freely the staggerer on earth, and his might is with their steps, and everlasting joy is in their dwellings. Eternal glory without end forever. Let them say, Blessed be God, author of majestic wonders, who reveals might splendidly and justifies with knowledge all his creatures so that goodness is on their faces. They know the multitude of his loving kindness and the abundance of his mercy to all the children of his truth. We know you, O God of righteousness, and we comprehend your majesty, O King of glory. For we have seen your zeal through your mighty power and have observed your deeds in the abundance of your mercies and wondrous forgiveness. What is flesh compared to these? What do dust and ashes amount to that they recite these things from age to age and hold themselves upright before you and enter communion with the sons of heaven? No interpreter can answer according to your mouth, for you have established us according to your pleasure in the territory of iniquity. We have spoken to you and not to a mediator, and you have lent an ear to the issue of our lips. Announce and say, Blessed be God, creator of the heavens by his power, designer of all their devices by his strength, of the earth by his might. Glorify God with a great voice. Proclaim his majesty in the congregation of the many. Glorify his name amid the multitude of the upright and recount his greatness with the faithful. Join your souls to the good and to the perfect to glorify the Most High. Assemble together to make known His salvation, and be not slow in making known His strength and His majesty to all the simple. For wisdom is given to make known the glory of the Lord and to recount the greatness of His deeds. She is made known to man to declare His strength to the simple and to give insight into His greatness to those without understanding. They who are far from her gates, who have strayed from her entrance. For the Most High is the Lord of Jacob, and His majesty is over all His works. And a man who glorifies the Most High is accepted by Him as one bringing an offering, as one offering goats and calves, as one causing the altar to grow fat on a multitude of burnt offerings, as an agreeable incense by the hand of the righteous. From the doors of the righteous her voice is heard, and from the congregation of the devout her song. When they eat their fill, she is mentioned, and when they drink in community together, their meditation is on the law of the Most High, and their words are for making known His strength. How far from the wicked is her word, and her knowledge from the insolent. Behold, the eyes of the Lord have compassion on the good, and his mercy is great over those who glorify him. From an evil time he saves their souls. Bless the Lord who redeems the humble from the hand of strangers, and delivers the perfect from the hand of the wicked, who lifts up a horn out of Jacob and a judge out of Israel. He desires his tabernacle in Zion and chooses Jerusalem forever. O oh Lord, I have called to you. Hear me. I have spread out my hands towards your holy dwelling place. Turn your ear and grant my request, and do not withhold my plea from me. Construct my soul and do not cast it away, and do not leave it alone before the wicked. May the true judge turn away from me the rewards of evil. Lord, do not judge me according to my sins, for no living man is righteous before you. Lord, cause me to understand your law and teach me your judgments. 
and the multitude shall hear of your deeds, and peoples shall honor your glory. Remember me and forget me not. Bring me not to unbearable hardships. Put away from me the sin of my youth, and may my sins not be remembered against me. Lord, cleanse me from the evil plague, and let it not return to me. Dry up its roots within me, and permit not its leaves to flourish in me. Lord, you are glory. Therefore, my plea is fulfilled before you. To whom shall I cry so that he will grant it to me? What more can the power of the sons of men do? From before you, O Lord, comes my trust. I cried to the Lord, and he answered me. He healed the brokenness of my heart. I was sleepy, and I slept. I dreamt, and also I awoke. Lord, you did support me when my heart was stricken, and I called upon the Lord my Savior. Now I will see their shame. I have relied on you, and I will not be ashamed. Render glory forever and ever. Redeem Israel, your pious one, O Lord, and the house of Jacob, your elect. For no worm thanks you, O Lord, nor do maggots recount your loving kindness. Only the living thank you. All they whose feet stagger, thank you when you make known to them your loving kindness and cause them to understand your righteousness. For the souls of all the living is in your hand. You have given breath to all flesh. O Lord, do towards us according to your goodness, according to the greatness of your mercies, and according to the greatness of your righteous deeds. The Lord listens to the voice of all who love his name and does not permit his loving kindness to depart from them. Blessed be the Lord, doer of righteous deeds, who crowns his pious ones with loving kindness and mercies. My soul shouts to praise your name, to praise with jubilation your mercies, to announce your faithfulness. There is no limit to your praises. I belonged to death because of my sins, and my iniquities had sold me to Sheol. But you did save me, O Lord, according to the greatness of your mercies, according to the greatness of your righteous deeds. I too have loved your name and have taken refuge in your shadow. When I remember your power, my heart is strengthened and I rely on your mercies. Forgive my sins, O Lord, and purify me of my iniquity. Grant me a spirit of faithfulness and knowledge. Let me not be dishonored and ruined. Let not Belial dominate me, nor an unclean spirit. Let pain and the evil inclination not possess my bones. For you, O Lord, are my praise, and I hope in you every day. My brethren rejoice with me, and the house of my Father is astounded by your graciousness. Forever I will rejoice in you. I will remember you, O Zion, for a blessing. With all my might, I love you. Your memory is to be blessed forever. Your hope is great, O Zion. Peace and your awaited salvation will come. Generation after generation shall dwell in you, and generations of the pious shall be your ornament. They who desire the day of your salvation shall rejoice in the greatness of your glory. They shall be suckled on the fullness of your glory, and in your beautiful streets they shall make chiming sounds. You shall remember the pious deeds of your prophets, and shall glorify yourself in the deeds of your pious ones. Cleanse violence from your midst, lying in iniquity. May they be cut off from you. Your sons shall rejoice within you, and your cherished ones shall be joined to you. How much they have hoped in your salvation, and how much your perfect ones have mourned for you. Your hope, O Zion, shall not perish, and your expectation will not be forgotten. The Lord is great and holy, the most holy for generation after generation. Majesty goes before Him, and after Him abundance of many waters. Love and kindness and truth are about His face. Truth and judgment and righteousness are the pedestal of his throne. He divides light from obscurity. He establishes the dawn by the knowledge of his heart. 
when all his angels saw it, they sang, for he showed them that which they had not known. He crowns the mountains with fruit, with good food for all the living. Blessed be the master of the earth with his power, who establishes the world by his wisdom. By his understanding he stretched out the heaven and brought forth wind from his stores. He made lightnings for the rain and raised mist from the end of the earth. The congregation shall praise the name of the Lord, for he has come to judge every action, to remove the wicked from the earth, so that the sons of iniquity shall not be found. The heavens shall give their due, and there shall be none within their boundaries. And the earth shall give its fruit in its time, and its product shall not fail. The fruit tree shall grow in its vineyard, and the poor shall eat, and the God-fearers shall be satisfied. Then heaven and earth shall exult together. Let all the stars of the evening twilight exult. Rejoice, Judah, rejoice, 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 and delight with gladness. Celebrate your feasts and pay your vows, for there is no Belial in your midst. Raise your hand and fortify your right hand. Behold, the enemy shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be dispersed. But you, O Lord, are forever. Your glory shall be forever and ever. Hallelujah.